guys, it's Teresa. Welcome back to my channel. I recently did a video where I talked about why I think that native speakers don't make the best teachers when they're not trained to be teachers and you're just asking them for advice or asking them to teach you their language. I can't tell you how many times I have been asked to teach someone German or English and it's just like such a vague concept and it's kind of impossible to do. It's just like give you all my knowledge, like what do you want from me here? Like it's not that easy. But I definitely think that it's very important and an awesome thing when you do have access to a native speaker to make the best of that encounter. So the term for this is tandem, or at least we use it, we say tandem. It's basically where two people meet up and they have different mother tongues and they want to learn each other's language. So you would kind of sit together, go get some coffee or something like that, and then talk in language A for a little while and talk in language B for a little while. That way, both of you are going to get to actively practice the language and also actively listen to somebody hopefully correctly speaking the language and it's kind of like also a friendship and chill natural setting without a proper teacher or like the stress of like a classroom so i personally think that that's one of the best methods that you can practice and improve a language and i definitely recommend that if you have the chance um, to find a language partner go grab it because this is going to help you massively. So in today's video, I wanted to give you some tips on how to make the best of your time working with a language partner because usually you maybe have like a couple hours a week to do it and when you kind of squander the time away or you're not happy with like what you get out of it, that can be a big issue. To kind of counteract that, my first tip is to set clear rules. And that means decide on a set day every week that you have time and can meet up. And if you can't meet up for whatever reason on that particular day, get a rain check and do it still in that week just on some other day. Because if you don't do this on a regular basis, it's not going to be as effective as it could be. Also, you want to be clear with your language partner that this is something that both of you should get something out of it. So I think it's important to have an eye on the time that you have together and sort of really split it 50-50 as much as possible so that both of you have a chance to practice the language you're learning and you're not just there sort of providing help without receiving anything in return. Obviously you don't have to be super nitpicky about it and be like well you had five minutes more than me but just in general try to like be aware of like when the half time kind of is reached and then actively be like okay now we're switching to the other language so that both of you can benefit from this. My next tip and this is kind of difficult and something I've very rarely managed actually in my time with tandem learning is to find a tandem partner that fits your personality and that you actually like. Obviously a setting where both of you come into the relationship um, trying to learn the other's language it's not the best setup for friendship because you're not motivated by actually wanting to get to know the other person intrinsically and more by what you can get out of your friendship with them. And even though that is something that's very clearly stated at the beginning, it can be a little bit of a hindrance, especially when through talking to the person you kind of realize that you don't really get along that well. It doesn't mean that you have to be fighting all the time, but just that your personalities don't really vibe and that if you didn't do this tandem thing that you probably wouldn't be friends. I'm not saying that a situation like this never works. For tandem, it certainly can and I've certainly made it work, but obviously it's gonna make it far less enjoyable and there's gonna be so many awkward moments where neither of you knows what to say and both of you are just like, well, <laughs> What do we do now? What do we talk about? With my current tenant partner, I'm really lucky. I randomly found her on Facebook and we've been meeting up once a week ever since and I really like her. We get along super well with very similar personality, I think, and um, that's kind of like the ideal thing. Like I look forward to her sessions every week and not just because I get to practice the language but also because I genuinely like her and I genuinely like hanging out with her and that's just such an added bonus. Plus, it makes you so much more comfortable talking to somebody that you like as opposed to somebody you maybe don't really like or are intimidated by or something like that. Like you're going to be much more self-conscious about making mistakes or saying stupid things like, oh my god, the amount of times I've just, you know, after a long day I have been stuttering, <laughs> like not knowing what to say in Japanese and it's been super awkward and the only reason 
I, and I'm like a very like awkward person, like I, I get like self-conscious super quickly. It didn't bother me. I didn't care because I knew that, you know, she didn't care either. You know, it's just su such a better environment to study and learn in when you're comfortable with each other and when you actually like each other. The next tip I would have is to prepare for your lessons and to make the most of them by not only talking about random daily things that happen to you, which is what you typically be doing, but also in your week between time sessions when you're probably studying the language on your own time, try to write down questions or points that you like want to discuss with her or him um, that you want to bring up and like ask your help for on. As I said in my last video, I think it's the best method to kind of prepare your own um, like for example hypothesis on, on grammar rules or something like that and then just like clarifying them with your language partner. Like in my case this is kind of the only time I get to ask a Japanese native speaker questions about Japanese grammar and vocabulary and things like that. I definitely am trying to make the most of that and, and that doesn't mean that you have to cram the entire time that you're going to spe be speaking um, full with questions but just like be mindful of what kind of roadblocks you encounter in your language learning throughout the week and then just discuss them at the end with your language partner. Next, I think it's really important to give them time to speak. And this is something I think is in general, like anybody who ever speaks with somebody who is trying to learn your mother tongue, make a point, try to remind yourself of letting them speak. This is something that I have encountered a lot of times, especially in Japan, for example, that made me really disappointed when I had a chance to speak and practice my Japanese but because the other person was trying to be overly nice and polite and didn't want me to feel uncomfortable, which is totally understandable and it's totally coming from a good place. But kind of any time that I would stumble a little bit or need a little bit more time to think of the word or the phrasing or whatever, they would try to guess what I was trying to say and oftentimes guess correctly and just kind of complete the sentence in my stead for me to make me feel better, which I again understand is coming from a good place, but as a language learner, this is not good. You are actively taking learning opportunities away from me if you interrupt me and if you finish my sentences for me. Become comfortable with discomfort and become comfortable with silence, letting the other person think even if it's awkward and you know maybe they won't think of the word at all and they will actually ask you to help and then feel free to help obviously but don't judge too quickly in that regard and don't make hasty decisions because it's really really important for the other person to have time to collect their thoughts even if you already know what they're going to say give them a chance to say it themselves the next point is don't be afraid of making mistakes and again, as I said earlier, this is a lot easier when you're comfortable with the other person on a personal level and when you actually like them and it's a friendship setting and you don't feel judged. But even if that's not the situation you're in 100%, still try to not be afraid of making mistakes and of just like trying out things and saying words and the other person will react accordingly. I've said stupid things a lot of the times, things I didn't actually mean that way and they came across wrong, but you're there to learn and you're not there to practice sentences that you already know 100% like how to say or like phrases that you already know. You're there to increase your language knowledge and to improve your skills and to do that, you unfortunately are gonna have to make mistakes. There's no way around it and that's the only way that you're gonna learn effectively. So just go out there and say something and ask the other person to correct you. It's kind of as easy as that, but also not. And I totally understand that, but definitely make an effort to try. On that note, I also just wanna add that I think it's really important to communicate to the other person what actually you're trying to get out of this experience. Are you just trying to casually practice the language or do you actually want to improve your grammar and vocabulary and do you actually want the other person to like correct everything that you say wrong? I mean that can get old really quickly and my tenant partner doesn't do it because I literally make so many mistakes <laughs> so I think there's like we wouldn't get anywhere if she were to correct anything I say but definitely let the other person just know what you want if you want to just get over the fear of speaking maybe and you don't really care about making mistakes you just want to be able to kind of actively produce 
words in that language or you want to just really improve like definitely make that clear and so that the other person also knows how to help you and like how to correct you and finally I think it's also really important to recognize the limits of the format of tandem learning as I said in that other video a native speaker isn't just by birth a teacher there's reasons why people have to actually get training to become teachers and especially on the higher levels of learning a language there's gonna be lots of cases where your tandem partner isn't gonna be able to help you a lot they might be able to tell you again what's correct and what isn't but they might not be able to explain it to you and you need to be prepared for that you need to know that that's not what the tandem format is for and that's just not what it can do for you. It's not a replacement for actual classes. It's not a replacement for having somebody fully explain something to you. It's just kind of there to supplement either your own personal learning or learning with another teacher. And again, I think it's very important to recognize that just so that you don't get disappointed. And yeah, I think that is it for all the things that I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. If you have any other tips on how to work with a tandem partner the most effectively, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And also if you have any sort of experiences to share working with language partners, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new videos every Tuesday and Friday. And I will see you very soon with another one. In the meantime, check out other videos I did and I will see you very soon. Have a lovely week. Bye!